hello <laughs> I am going to show you a very fun project today can you guess what it is I bet you can't <laughs> um, it's not looking at all as what it should look like afterwards I'm just going to continue working on it as I'm talking to you so yes all right so yesterday I booked a knitting machine for a couple of hours at Strix design studio in Maastricht and I have been at Strix before during a uh, summer knitting week uh, just um, this past August and it was a lot of fun. It was a design course with Strix and Lorette Garman. Lorette Garman uh, has a, a knitting academy in Amsterdam called The Amsterdam Stitch or The Amsterdamse Steak. Um, and Strix uh, Maartje from Strix. Uh, she has a um, knitting machine school, basically. I think she also teaches at the Art Academy in Maastricht, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, they are producing um, knitting patterns for the knitting machine. And um, it was it was a load of fun and very inspiring to follow the design course. And um, during the design course, I also got to learn how to knit on the knitting machine, which was mind blowing. Um, I definitely want a knitting machine someday. Um, and I well. As you may know, I have a lot of yarn, and as you may know, machine knitting goes a lot faster than hand knitting. Um, and I had this idea for a blanket uh, with Escapius Downtown. Where did I put the label? Here it is. So you may know Escapius uh, Metropolis which is my favorite yarn, Escapius Metropolis. And this is uh, named after cities around the world. And now, or since March last year, maybe March two years before, um, they have Escapius Downtown, which is a self-striping version of that yarn. So Escapies Metropolis and Escapies Downtown, they go together very well, but they can also be used on their own. And uh, this is a swatch that I hand knit. And you may recognize this from a podcast episode way back when I was knitting on this strip. And back then I already had the idea of creating a blanket. Um, I have a sketch of it here which might give you an idea. So I have all of these different colors of downtown and I wanted to knit a strip of each. Um, and then, so, so you would have very long strips and then you would sew them all together and have a beautiful blanket. And here is kind of my sketch of the blanket. Um, and I thought if I would do a narrower strip, then the stripes would be more like blocks. And if I would do a wider strip, then the stripes would be really thin. And I, I thought that would be a lot of fun. But then, you know, <laughs> I followed the uh, design course and I thought, well, I'm n I never, <laughs> can't even get it out. I, th I thought I'm never going to knit stock it out flat with my hands again <laughs> so so i frogged this strip back to just this little swatch so i could make some uh, calculations based off of that obviously my hand knitting gauge is different from the machine knit gauge so i had to adjust it a little bit but i thought i just want to finish this on the knitting machine and 
I mean, knit it on the knitting machine and then finish it by hand uh, so that I can have that blanket, but in a way smaller time frame. And that is where all of these come in. So um, I'll show you a couple of clips of the uh, knitting machine of the studio as I'm talking. So it's at Strix, uh, S-T-R-I-K-K-S, Strix, in uh, Maastricht, which is a city very close to me. And uh, they use brother, brother knitting machines and they have a fine knitter and a wide knitter. Um, uh, you know, small gauge and big gauge uh, machines. Uh, the small gauge machine, um, I filmed the the number of the machines, so you should be able to see it. Um, but uh, I I learned to machine knit on those machines specifically at Strix, and machine knitting machines they differ very much. Uh, you know, between each machine, machine, it's kind of like spinning wheels. Um, to manufacturers of spinning wheels, the the, uh, the spinning wheels aren't quite the same, and I think that's the same with um, knitting machines. So, um, so I I was happy to rent that uh, knitting machine for a couple of hours and crank out some yarn snakes. <laughs> And I started out with this one. So this is all Scapies Downtown. And um, usually for machine knitting, you have specific kinds of yarn. Uh, you know, it's all in cones, so it unwinds easily. But what's great about Scapies Downtown and also Scapies Metropolis is that it has this easy start tag and you can pull from the center. So I just, um, they had some like uh, small plastic buckets so we could set the, the yarn ball upright and then it would just be fed into the machine. Um, and it worked, it worked like a charm. I had a few uh, things, you know, with all commercial yarns, there are going to be some knots in there. Most of them did hold up. There was one where the yarn snapped and uh, a stitch dropped on the machine, which is a little bit more difficult to fix than when you have a drop stitch uh, in your hand knitting, because um, I'll, I'll show some more footage of the knitting machine here. When you're at the knitting machine, you're looking at the uh, you know, wrong side. You're looking at the pearl side of the stockinette. Um, and you may know that picking up a stitch on the pearl side is different from picking up a stitch on the knit side. Uh, so that's why it was a little bit uh, difficult. But uh, that was in this yarn snake. And uh, where is it? <laughs> that's a good sign. Uh, ah, here it is. Um, I managed to, you know, to fix it at the machine. And then uh, I duplicate stitched over that in this spot here. There. And it's almost invisible now, so I'm quite happy with that. And I started with the first snake, the first strip. Um, where I used the st stitch count from my swatch, which is 35 stitches. Um, and I had calculated that I could do around 600 rows with that, and 600 is what I wanted. Um, I wanted that length. Um, but when I came to 600 rows, which is very easy to see on the knitting machine because it has kind of like an inbuilt row counter. Every time you go past the row counter, it um, adds one. Uh, but when I got to 600, uh, I had quite a bit left of this yarn. So I thought, okay, I don't really want to make it longer, uh, but I can make it wider. So um, did I do that for this one? I think so. Um, so then I used 
50 stitches um, widthwise. So this is 35, and then I went to 50. So it's quite a bit wider. I think this is 10 or 11 centimeters wide, and this is 15. Um, and yeah, and then I was pretty much able to, you know, to, to finish most of the yarn uh, without playing yarn chicken, because I did not want to play yarn chicken. Um, I, I wanted to have a, a margin left. Um, and each one of these strips um, is two balls of yarn, except for one which is this one, where I only had one ball of. So this is only 25 stitches wide. Um, and it was a little bit of yarn chicken with this one, but yeah, this, this was one ball, and I think I had broken into that ball already. But um, you can see how the stripes are really wide on this one. Um, which is really fun um, because you can really see the difference and I think that's going to be really fun in the blanket so this one is one ball the rest is all two balls um, so I made nine strips in total uh, and one was one ball, uh, the rest eight were all two balls, so that means 16 plus the one. So I knit 17 balls of yarn yesterday in three hours. <laughs> and um, and that's almost 6,000 rows because it's 600 rows per snake. Um, so yeah, it's a lot. 6,000 rows in three hours. And I don't know if you've ever um, used a knitting machine before, but um, <laughs> um, I, have, I, <laughs> I have so much muscle ache right now because you're, you're doing this over and over and over and over again. And you're using your shoulder and your upper arm muscles which I don't use very often. Um, and it's basically like in the gym using one of these machines with like half a kilo, half a kilogram, but for three hours. So yeah, I was very sore. Uh, I <laughs> couldn't catch sleep easily last night because um, I'm used to um, lying on my, on my belly and that means your arms are kind of like bent bent backwards a little bit um and that just hurt way too much um yeah <laughs> and it's crazy to think i i got sore muscles from knitting but it really machine knitting is is a whole different thing than hand knitting um yeah, but I'm really, um, I'm just really pleased with all of this progress because I would have never done this by hand anymore. I am, I'm so grateful uh, that I was able to book that knitting machine because I'm not ready to get one of my own just yet. Um, and now I am blocking a couple of these snakes. They're not dry yet, so um, I'll just post some footage on the screen. Um, but yes, I am blocking them. Uh, one of them has been really properly washed and then pinned. And the other one, I'm experimenting with just ironing that one. Um, and I, I don't think I can get them all completely flat before I sew them together. Uh, I think it's going to be way easier to block them when they're all together um, but yeah before I sew them all together I need to know if these are all of the strips or if I want to add more because I do have some more downtown I have enough for four more stripes 
uh, four more strips. Um, but I just I just have to calculate how how big the blanket will be with just these. Um, I don't know if I already explained why I'm doing this um, because um, I know how to cast off on the machine, but um, but it, it was too time consuming and because my time with the machine was precious, I just added some, uh, where do I have another practice skein? I think this might be one of the last ones, but uh, I just finished with a couple extra rows of knitting and then I'm picking back up. Uh, I'm picking the stitches back up and casting it on myself, uh, casting it off myself, because that's going to be um, quicker and easier um, than doing that on the machine. And if I had cast off all of these on the machine, that I think I would only have finished maybe five or six, because it takes a lot of time. So I'm happy that I did this. Uh, and I, I still have a little bit of yarn left over from each uh, ball because, um, yeah, because I wanted to leave a margin. So I am able to finish it with the exact same yarn. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, so I will keep you updated um, on this project. Uh, I hope, I hope it will look the way I want it to look. But we will only know when, when I give it a try. So I'll keep you updated. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.